Uh, there's also uh, a lot of information coming out about one of the uh, newest members of, of the uh, Republican caucus, caucus in Congress. She's from Georgia. We're talking about Marjorie Taylor Greene. She was the one of the most prominent Q anon espousers, conspiracy espousers, elected to the um, Republican Party in the House. And Nancy Pelosi got a question about her uh, today. Madam Speaker, I wanted to ask you about Marjorie Taylor Greene. How concerned are you about her past posts, remarks, rhetoric? Um, what would you like to see done about her? What I'm concerned about is the Republican leadership in the House of Representatives who was willing to overlook, ignore uh, those uh, statements, uh, a per- assigning her to the education committee when she has mocked the killing of little children at Sandy Hook Elementary School, when she has mocked the killing of teenagers in high school at the Marjorie Stoneham Douglas High School, what could they be thinking or is thinking too generous a word uh, and, 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 you know, in some respects here, uh, Pelosi is almost understating what Marjorie Taylor Greene did uh, on social media. She responded to a post claiming that Sandy Hook and Parkland, these two horrific shootings, one at an elementary school, one and at I a high school. I think the Las Vegas shooting, too. She also put out social media videos about the Las Vegas shooting. So this is a well, huge problem. She responded to a, a post on social media that claimed that these things never happened, that they were fake. And she not just liked it, which I guess theoretically you could argue, well, I liked it just to, as a place marker. Then she went on to say it's all true. That's all true. She agreed with that sentiment. I mean, this is um, disturbing if this person just simply existed. <laughs> Uh, that, which they do, that, I mean. Which, of course, they do. Uh, but the idea that she has been placed on the education committee by uh, Republicans here, I guess presumably she's going to make sure that uh, we don't have any more false flag operations there. But it really is stunning. And frankly, I've been saying this for 16 years. I wrote a book about it in uh, 2006. The Republican Party has been barreling towards this, and there has not been even a slight touch on the brakes, right? We had a maybe seven-day period where the Republican Party showed some measure of remorse for a tiny bit of measure of remorse by, by privately revealing that they may hold Donald Trump accountable for the insurrection that took place in in, in Congress. And now they're just not. And, and now it's gone. I mean, it, it, it almost tracks perfectly with the grab them by the you know what uh, tape where people came out, uh, Republican lawmakers are like, I can't even look at my daughter in the eye and vote for this guy. And then, of course, two weeks go by and then all of a sudden, I guess maybe they got a pair of glasses or something like that and it, it helped them. But, yeah, or a blindfold so they didn't have to look their daughter in the eye. And this is uh, what Pelosi is doing here is, um, is exactly what the Democrats should be doing. This this talk of of unity. Let's just for a moment take it uh, as if at, at face value that there is some belief that um, that that there that there are some Democratic lawmakers who believe that there is an opportunity to forge some form of unity with Republicans. Let's take it at face value as opposed to, well, we we have moderate positions that we want to basically prevent the heart of the Democratic Party from uh, from passing anything that might be too uh, progressive or too helpful to people. And we want to be able to maintain our business interests. And therefore, we join with Republicans to let them stop those things so that we don't have to own it. But let's just assume that there's a certain amount of sincerity there. That's absurd. That is completely devoid of the reality that exists in Congress and has existed in there for now almost decades. And it, it's playing into Republicans' hands by pretending that's some sort of reality because you have Ronna McDaniel, the, the head of the RNC, coming out, and she says QAnon is completely fringe. She said that yesterday. 
Thirty percent of Republicans are sympathetic to QAnon, and those poll numbers were taken by YouGov after the Capitol insurrection. And we have a member of Congress who is a QAnon believer and didn't just do social media posts. Allegedly, it looks like her. She harassed David Hogg, one of allegedly, I, I don't know if it's been confirmed if that video is her, but it sure looks like her, followed him down the street for two minutes, harassing him and claiming it was some sort of false flag and there were unanswered one, questions. One of the and Parkland actor, survivors. One of the Parkland survivors. That's the kind of person who's in Congress. So I, it, there is a lot of value in Pelosi saying this publicly. I would have gone further, but still, it's as you said to me before the show, it's not Ocasio-Cortez. It's not someone who traditionally speaks out having the leader of the Democratic Party saying something like this, it's important. It forces the media to pay attention to it. It forces the rest of the public to pay attention to it. Because if, if you don't have the Democrats saying it, then nobody will say it. Because you cannot expect the media to do this uh, on their own. They'll report on certain things, but in terms of like really hammering uh, in just how craven the Republican Party has become from top to bottom. And I say this has been going on for decades. Uh, I still remember uh, John Boehner being asked, I think it was by, uh, maybe it was Lester Holt, I can't remember. Um, will you have your uh, the, the caucus members who are bringing up legislation about the president um, not being an American, will, will you do anything about that? No, he won't. I mean, this has been ongoing, and of course it builds on itself, and and... Gosh knows where the Republican Party is going to be uh, five years from now with this stuff. So uh, good on Nancy Pelosi. If it doesn't um, uh, cause the Republicans to actually change uh, what they do, like don't put the person who thought these uh, shootings were false flag operations on the Education Committee, for God's sakes, um, then at the very least, it will force them to pay a political price on some level. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to talk to Eric Levitz about the uh, filibuster battle that has only just begun in the Democratic Party and particularly uh, in the Senate caucus. 